They're trying to convince the American public, on the other hand, that the Second Amendment and every gun owner in this country represents a huge threat to public safety. What makes the United States different and unique is the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Others have tried to copy it. No one's ever been able to duplicate it in the whole world because we are unique with those American freedoms. Thank you very much. We stand for core fundamental beliefs that are at the very root of American consciousness in this country. And if we stand for what we believe in and we battle back, we will win. I probably go back 30 some years with Safe Now and John Cushman. I think the world of them, they do a great job and they have my total support. We originally uh, created Safe as a local organization from Nassau, Suffolk County and maybe a little bit from New York City because really we had no really strong outspoken group. We're an organization that's primarily interested in firearms legislation, firearms law, and educating the general public how to use guns for, properly. We need to educate more and more people uh, on the firearms because they're not dangerous. If you learn how to use them correctly, they can be a real asset to you. It's I never shot before. I really want to know how to do everything correctly before I go out and buy any type of guns. I take a lot of self-defense classes, but never an actual gun class. So, you know, I wanted to move into that realm. And I really like it, so I might just continue. And there are a lot of people who are not interested in buying guns, but they're getting the training just out of curiosity because of the issues. I mean, you could call it a Second Amendment issue. It's a rights issue. People are buying up guns and buying up ammo and getting firearms training. It's one of the great freedom movements in the history of the country. I mean, here you have a time when the media is bashing the Second Amendment, politicians are bashing the Second Amendment, and what the American public is doing is running out and buying firearms, joining the NRA, buying ammunition, and running right back to this great freedom that they have. Uh, over the years, people who don't know any better, thanks to the media who don't know any better either, uh, have been portraying anybody with a firearm as if they were a, a criminal, a person who's involved in criminal activities. And that's just not true. And by their own numbers, we know this. They estimate that there's four or five hundred million guns in circulation in the United States, owned by almost 80 million people. My grandfather taught me to use a, a gun years ago. I'm not going to tell you how many years, but years ago. Less than one one hundredth of one percent are actually used in crime. One one hundredth of one percent. That's minuscule, but the way the media has it, you would think that it was the other way around, and that's not true. I've always been in it, been involved in uh, guns, uh, different guns, and I will guess I'll continue to be involved with them as long as I'm. the Lord upstairs gives me health and strength. Good, honest, law-abiding people do not get involved in crime, and we can prove it by any standard they want to use. I'm in the process of getting my pistol license, so I had to go to the whole, get the character references, and I asked a couple of people at work, I've worked in the same, I'm a teacher and I've worked in the same school for a long time, so I, I had a couple of my, my supervisors, I'm like, can you sign this for me? And I got a couple of funny looks, so why do you want to do that? It doesn't matter if it's in the Constitution, it doesn't matter. These people just want what they want, they want control. I think the American public knows that they don't want to be left defenseless. They don't trust the politicians. They hear the Eric Holders. They hear the Hillary Clintons. They hear of a Dianne Feinstein saying she'll pick the time and the place. And they go, I'm going to be there standing for this freedom, and I'm not going to lose it. And uh, we need to pay attention to those grassroots people because those people are the ones that put the legislators in, in their position and in their office. Well, to me, the Second Amendment is probably the most important part of the Bill of Rights. That's why I put the Second Amendment first. It's the teeth in the Bill of Rights. I mean, if a push comes to shove and you have to defend our, our civil liberties, our civil rights, our freedom, the Bill of Rights itself, without the Second Amendment, I mean, you don't have any, any means of defending the piece of paper. Our strength is people one by one all over this country that want to stand on principle, stand for these freedoms that have made our country what it is today. And that's why we haven't lost them like England, Canada, and Australia. But as this heat battle heats up, and it is heating up even more than ever, if, if we don't get more engaged, we're going to lose. The NRA is you. It's the fact that we do this one by one, people all over the country. The media never understands that. The media always thinks somehow, my gosh, the NRA in Washington is going to get beat. And they don't understand that what the NRA is, it's people all over this country that are determined not to lose it. All of the people in Suffolk County, Nassau County, New York City, if nothing else, we're a strong voice to make sure you know what's going on. Look around you. 
There's a whole host of politicians and wannabe politicians in this room today. The Washington Post, ABC, NBC, CBS, they're not the majority, we are. And we have to stand up for our views. The media makes it sound like we're the minority. And it has become an historical fact that it's bad politics for a, a politician to be on the wrong side of a Second Amendment at election time. You don't believe in our issues. You don't believe in our children having the rights they were born with. Then we have no use for you. Our strength is one by one, block by block, all over the United States of America. I also think they processed events like Hurricane Katrina. My gosh, I mean, the right to own a firearm was the very underpinning of citizens' ability to stay alive after that hurricane hit. There was no 911, there was no police protection. People talked about their firearm as their one source of hope. I remember one woman saying, I had my Bible and I had my gun, and that's what got me through. And uh, that's the way people feel about it, and that's the way people feel all over the country. Well, uh, I'll take the guns and the bullets to be able to use it to defend the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment. Without that, we're, we don't really have a Bill of Rights. SAFE is critical to join. It fights every day for this freedom. It represents people, attend the meetings, contribute to SAFE, because SAFE does great work here in, in uh, New York. We want people to get motivated into learning that you can and you should defend your constitutional rights. More and more people realize that it's a struggle. and. Um, it's one they can't afford to lose. And if we don't keep fighting, we're going to lose it. And I'm proud to be a part of this struggle to save this freedom. We need to lose one fight, and we've lost all of our civil rights. We need to win every fight so as to be able to keep them. These freedoms we have are just words on a piece of thin paper unless we fight for them every day, all of us.